Smells like what I imagine a pirate ship would smell like. Hopefully no pops, no cracks. We're gonna blast shield. There we go. That looks like some damage. Okay. Got it. Cool. Beautiful. Today we are doing a rescue operation for one of our viewers. This is a computer that came from Bilal and it was in a hurricane. So this computer ended up in the hurricane that went through and uh, caused a lot of devastation in Louisiana back in late August. We got the computer in. We're going to see if we can fix it up today. I have photos of it. It doesn't look pretty. Uh, from what I understand, it wasn't fully submerged in water, but it had a lot of rain dump on it from the hurricane. It has sheetrock all over it. It at least has some amount of corrosion, internal damage, things like that. And uh, I believe Bilal has not attempted to turn it on since the hurricane. So we're going to try and get it working today and see if we can at least restore it to where it was. Or if I have to, I'll break out the parts from our own storage facility and send him back something he's not expecting. So we'll get him up and running either way and try to make, why is it doing that? And try to start rising again and try to make it so that he's able to work and game on his computer once more because the guy lost a lot in that hurricane and the very least I can do is at least get the computer up and running. Before that, this video is brought to you by Crucial and it's Crucial X6 portable SSD. We use these external SSDs all over the office for rapidly transferring games and files between systems. The X6 comes in 500 gigabytes, one terabyte, two terabyte, and four terabyte capacities with USB-A or USB Type-C for the cable. For a high speed and high capacity external drive from Crucial, Click the link in the description below. So the backstory to this, I saw a tweet from Bilal on Twitter back in August or September. And uh, I believe the initial tweet was simply asking us what we thought the chances were or what we would do to try and repair it. And I basically said, why don't you send us an email? And uh, we ended up just taking it in to try and fix it ourselves and see what we can do. The, I saw the photos from it. The roof of the house was ripped off. There was uh, a large hole where water just dumped in. The rest of the room looked more or less trashed by the events of the hurricane. And uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a nightmare because he's got to try and get everything back. So that's going to be everything from stuff as simple as clothing to new shelter up to the more higher end items, like what was a really nice computer. This is supposed to be custom water cooled. So really, I mean, words can't do it justice how just sort of how much loss there is from one uh natural event ready andrew it's coming your way i don't think you want to be there okay i actually haven't looked at this so we're gonna find out how bad it is oh man that looks really gross I see a lot of sheetrock, or maybe mold. I'm pretty sure that's just sheetrock, though. It smells like what I imagine a pirate ship would smell like. He he drained the loop before shipping it. I did ask him to do that because I was worried about, um, well, the water. I don't know. I don't know why. To be honest, I'm not really sure why I was worried about the water and and the loop spilling into the computer that was in a hurricane, but uh, some things are just autopilot and getting water out of a computer is one of them. I now see that that was stupid and pointless. Sorry for wasting your time, but I'll probably wouldn't have mattered if it leaked more. Things to worry about if you're ever in a situation as, as sort of uh, ill-fated as this, things to look for, even if you just spill water into your computer because you tip it over. Uh, you want to immediately make sure it's completely dry. Turn it all off. Don't turn it on again until it's dry. The water itself is not going to hurt it. It's the power with the water causing a short that's going to hurt it. So that's one thing to look for. Another thing, because there's debris in here from who knows where, from the roof, from the walls, where there might be metal, nails, things like that, we're going to take it all apart, make sure there's no metal debris in between any component and another component like SMDs, uh, legs of inductors, things like that, and make sure there's no path to short. Um, once we've cleaned it, we'll know at that point we can at least try and turn it on and see what's still alive. 
Oh man, that's not gonna lie, that kind of scared me. <laughs> Thought I had just broken something from the computer. <laughs> okay, 3080 FE. That's a sad sight. Really not in bad condition, just kind of gross, but uh, let's be honest, it's not much grosser than how most people's computers look anyway, just from not getting cleaned for quite a while. So we're, we're at a good starting spot for having survived a hurricane. If your video card looks worse than this and all it has ever done is sat in the computer and beyond, then um, just friendly reminder, you should probably clean it because this was in a hurricane. So if yours is worse than this, that's saying something. It's not as rusty as I would expect. There's a little bit right there. Yeah, he said it wasn't in standing water for too long or too deep. Mm -hmm. This doesn't look terrible. Here's the video card. I just talked to the camera about how a lot of people's video cards that weren't in a hurricane look worse than this, so. Yeah, I probably cleaned it out. So yeah, disassembly, cleaning, and then testing. testing. Yep. So disassembly is easy. We can get started on that right now. I think if there's anything hiding in the bottom, it'll be under the power supply. Pretty clean. This overall seems much more salvageable than I was expecting. Um, salvageable, sure. Needs cleaning, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah. People that weren't in hurricanes have dirtier PCs than you. Wow, I hope not. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> very naive, so <laughs> come on. <laughs> Clean your PC every once in a while. Come on, people. There we go. Okay. Got it. Cool. Beautiful. This is a 8700K. The CPU should be fine. There's no reason that would be bad. Although, even if it was completely fried, we do have replacements for that as well. You may have been using That's heavy. That. Disassembly is complete. Cleaning is next. Andrew's priority is cleaning the case. Um, Stone, I, I don't know if you want to start with the power supply. That's kind of up to you, what you want your schedule to be on that. That um, sounds good. Okay, so we got the power supply, and we're going to see if it still works. Open it up, see if there's any kind of corrosion in there. Let's go. We'll get started by uh, just checking out the cables, checking out the inside. Got to take everything apart. Um, use a trusty toothbrush and some alcohol to clean off any kind of nasty that's in there maybe and uh, we'll go from there then we'll put it on the SM8800 and SM220 and see what uh, what it can do in terms of delivering the correct load or delivering the correct power for the correct load that's it All right, yeah, so it looks like, uh, other than some dust bunnies, there's not really much terrible going on in here, but we do have some good-sized dust bunnies. Look at this little fellow. So happy. Um, but I don't see any corrosion on any of the top side components, which is good. Still going to take it out of the case to get a look. Uh, still got to be careful about touching things. These capacitors are most likely discharged, but uh, better safe than sorry. So gonna do some more disassembly and then check the charge on those capacitors. There we go. Find the location of the bolt caps. They're over here. Those two and those two should be, yep, just like that, negative to positive. So we just check here. 0. 0.002 volts, so that's uh, that's going to be okay. I'm, I'm feeling fine with that, and it's the same here. All right, yeah, so no trouble there. So as expected, nothing to worry about. All right, that is the best shielding I have seen on a power supplies AC input. 
That's pretty cool. And again, we have spade connectors down here, which makes removing this great for working on it. So let's see if I can just wiggle these spades off. Yeah, th that's, that's fantastic. That really is good. So now, like I said, we've got some dust in here to get, get rid of, but nothing to be too majorly concerned about. So you think this will power on just fine? I do believe this will power on just fine. So while Stone has been working on the power supply, I have been working on disassembling this motherboard. On the back here, you can see there's um, some residue that has dripped down the board. Thermal pads are a little bit oily uh, intentionally, and I think maybe just the moisture dripping down from the top of the case here encouraged that to run down here. So that shouldn't hurt anything, but we can clean that up. Um, I don't think, I mean, that's definitely not water because it hasn't evaporated. So there's some minor corrosion at points where two different kinds of metal got wet together. Um, these screw holes here have a little bit of rust on them. That's where the wireless card was attached. That shouldn't affect function and it's not visible at all when the board is assembled. So if we continue using this board, that won't really be an issue. All right, so here we go. Uh, loads are programmed. It's currently at a 10% load, and the tester is about to be turned on. So I'm going to see if I got the right voltage coming out of the wall. I'm at 120 volts, technically 120.42, fluctuating very slightly. And the next thing to do is turn this power supply on. So just go to flick like this. Hopefully, no pops, no cracks. We're going to blast shield. There we go. So th this should be no problem. Uh, we should be able to see the fan start rotating pretty quickly. And power supply on buttons right here. You can see we're not pulling much current. Uh, I think it's a total of like six amps off a of 12 volt and then very little on five, three, three, and five ESP. So here we go. So we got fan spinning. That's a good sign. Um, you can see the power being pulled from the wall right there. Uh, so. We've got um, pretty much exactly what we're expecting. That uh, looks very normal. So at low loads, things are looking good. And I think I'm probably gonna keep it on 20% load for a while, so I won't keep you guys here, because, uh, you know, probably don't need to watch a power supply test for five minutes. But we'll go ahead and step it up. So I'm just gonna jump to my 20% load. And you can see I'm now uh, producing 170 watts, pulling 184. So that's, a, that's pretty much expected. And my current numbers are here. And uh, voltage. Voltage dipped a little bit. So this is a power supply from 2012. Still pretty strong numbers here. Pretty strong numbers. We are at 100% load here. We've been sitting at 100% load for well over five minutes, probably going on 10 minutes now. And the voltage numbers are below 12 volts. We started out above 12 volts and we're below 12 volts now. So the voltage regulation is probably a little bit higher than 1%, but that's not too bad, especially considering this is a, almost a 10 year old power supply. Um, the voltage regulation is holding really well and the efficiency, even at 100%, is almost at 90%. Even at 100% load is almost at 90% efficiency. So. This is this power supply is uh, really good, and for, for it to be this age and the components still holding up this well, uh, this is something that is definitely usable, and I, I would use this in my build. So um, we could put something different in there, but something so dependable like this, might as well keep going with this thing. Okay, so I've stripped down the motherboard. I've cleaned off a little bit. Um, I've taken off everything that's unnecessary, that includes the Wi-Fi card, uh, stuff like that. And I've put in some RAM, I've put in the CPU, uh, not the one that came with it, um, one that is known good. Um, CMOS batteries out, got peripherals connected. So this is the bare minimum that we need to boot it up and make sure that all the RAM slots are working, basically. Um, and if this works, I'll do more uh, in-depth function tests on the PCIe slots and setup ports and stuff like that. But let's see if it actually turns on first. Okay, no go. Hmm. I will try a fresh CMOS battery since that one was the one that was in the flood. 
and I don't think I'm gonna invest, and then I'll pop a couple um, RAM sticks to see if uh, maybe one of the slots is dirty or something like that, but but um, it's got RAM, it's got a CPU, it's got what it needs to make something appear on a screen, and it is not doing that. Um, and it, it also, you know, more significantly isn't outputting anything on the, the um, what is it, seven segment? But I'll clean out the socket anyway and see what happens. And if you don't hear back from me, it didn't work. Oof. That looks like some damage. See how it's caked in there? It might be hose time for sure. So uh, we took it outside, soaked it up, scrubbed it down, and jet sprayed it. And then we um, took a heat gun to it to make sure no rust is gonna happen. We do have a few little tiny nick marks here and there. We'll paint over those. And we got a few little spots of, I don't know, debris hanging out over here. Uh, we'll take an air compressor and get rid of those and uh, then this radiator will be ready to go back in. So, not looking too bad. Good recovery on that one. Okay, so next up is are all these fans. We tried to blast off um, as much as we could. We tried to vacuum off as much as we could. Didn't really get very far. Um, and we'd love to just take these and just spray them in water, except that there's a chance that it could get in the bearings. Uh, supposedly the bearings are sealed and that should be fine. Um, but it's it's a possibility that you could get liquid or water in there and that water could cause corrosion and then your fans could just seize up. So instead we're going to take the old, uh, I guess, elbow grease approach. We're going to spray some cleaner onto the cloth here and then just wipe each blade manually. It shouldn't take too long, so here we go. Okay, so we are now done with all the cleanup for the cooling. Um, the fans are all good, um, both the radiator fan and the case fans. Uh, those are some just five and a quarter bay covers. Uh, we got all the hardware over here for the liquid cooling loop has all been cleaned out. We're gonna get rid of the liquid cooling tubes um, and we'll trade those out for something better. Uh, maybe Steve or Patrick will have something special for us there. And then uh, the radiator cleaning was pretty fun too. Uh, that was probably the most fun I've had with a hose in a while. So, um, you know, hey, hoses, scrub brushes, lots of fun always, uh, not really. But uh, I do like the way this came out. So pretty happy with all that stuff and uh, just got one or two more things to clean up and we'll have everything in the assembly line for reassembly. We went into the GM hardware archives and dug up a Z390 Aorus Master, which is exactly the board um, that was originally in the system that was damaged. We don't think we're going to be able to salvage that board, but the board that was in storage, um, we can just swap that in and it should be completely fine. Uh, the one issue was that the box, when we found it in the storage room, was marked uh, I think it, it had a postcode on it. Uh, the board wasn't booting. Um, the good news is that I took it out and there were two very obviously bent pins on it. So um, I did all this off camera because if it didn't work, then it was just gonna get scrapped anyway. But um, I went ahead and straightened the pins and I can at least show you uh, what that looked like. So again, this is the new-ish board from storage. It hasn't been used much. Um, it's been out of commission for a while because of the bent pen, but bent pens, the good thing about them is that you can just straighten them out and the board works perfectly again. So I went ahead and straightened one of the pens at the top of the socket, um, and I tried to straighten this one at the bottom as well, but it looks like it's still a little bit crooked. So I'll go fix that now. Okay, so I'm, I'm aware that everything um, on a hardware level is straightened out here. So now we can go over to the other station and turn it on and verify that it posts and that all the memory is recognized. Let's see, should be good to go. 
Okay, cool. So we're in the BIOS. Um, you can see we have 16 gigabytes of memory. That's correct. That's four by four gigabytes. Everything else on here, we will test. Uh, we'll test all the USB ports. Um, we'll obviously put a real GPU in there and uh, his original CPU and make sure that that works. Um, but we're trying to test one element at a time. Yeah, I put it over here for safekeeping where I'm definitely gonna remember that it is. Uh, Andrew, you can remind me when I ask where the CPU is later. Um, this is the dead board. We reassembled it, um, it belongs to him, so we're gonna send it back, obviously. Um, and it's pretty well cleaned up. It looks nice, but it will not boot. There's some thermal paste on the back, but there's thermal paste on everything in this office. So we're doing some functional testing on the Flood PC, trying to get this thing back in good working order. And the first thing we did was we plugged in some LED strips to an LED controller, which is right here. And that's just run off straight off of the power supply. And so as you can see, we've got beautiful RGB LED patterns. Um, then we've run that over to another RGB LED controller. And that is uh, sending RGB signals to the fan. So they're beautifully cycling through. And we also have some uh, just some basic power being fed to the fans to test to see if the fans are working. Um, and I think right now it's turned on pretty low. If we crank it up. Yeah, you can see they're spinning a little faster. So we know the fans are working well. We're not getting any kind of crazy noise coming out of them. That's a good thing. We'll let them run at full blast for a little bit and make sure that the bearings are doing it all right. Uh, additionally, we need to test the LEDs on our guy's block here. So this is just a little block uh, and we'll plug that in. What we hope is we hope these two little LEDs right here will light up when we give it direct power. And we'll give it a go. Look at that. All right, so his block is still in good shape too. So the uh, case fans are looking good. RGB is looking good. The radiator fans are looking good. The pump's looking good. The LEDs on the water block are looking good. This first mirror module has completed its first pass and that's 100% okay. If there were any errors, you'd see the errors down here in red and they'd show up with an error count of whatever number it was. So this memory module is probably in good shape and we'll test this one and the others uh, and then go to that, like I said, all four of them in the board at the same time to make sure that it works in uh, dual channel configuration. So function testing, got to make sure everything works before we send it off. Okay, so this is the final stage before reassembly. We have most of the parts here except for the new motherboard that we're putting in. Um, everything has been cleaned, everything is verified functional, so that includes the CPU, um, we did not end up relitting that. Uh, it has liquid metal under it and it looks like um, it's been resealed. So uh, that actually held up pretty well. We uh, ran some you know, brief sentiment tests, which is enough to let us know if, there's, um, if the liquid metal has shifted and if there's poor coverage, but uh, all the core temperatures look even. They're all you know, reasonable temperatures, so CPU's good, CPU's crossed off. Um, you did some memory testing? Indeed, yep. We ran the full gamut of memory tests, tested every module individually, and then tested all four modules in the slots at the same time, and everything came out beautifully. So that was a good spot. Uh, GPU's all cleaned. Um, Stone did like two shifts of cleaning the GPU, and uh, <laughs> we actually, you know, you took the fan out, but we didn't have to disassemble the GPU at all. That's that was nice. something we're trying to avoid with this card. Um, it's a Fender's Edition card. They're pretty complicated to take apart and they're more complicated to put back together without um, cosmetic damage. So uh, this is what we opted for. We're gonna reassemble the loop the way he had it and then leave the GPU air cooled the way that he had it. Um, and you know, maybe make things as tidy and as good looking as we can, but um, leave it functionally the same. Yeah, we literally went over it with a fine tooth comb, or brush even. The case is gonna be the one major change. Um, we haven't actually discussed this uh, with the viewer yet, but um, we're gonna upgrade the case to a 7000D. Obviously the old Obsidian, it's his. If he wants it, um, we'll ask him what he wants us to do with it. Um, if he wants to put his system back in there, he can, but uh, we're going to upgrade to the 7000D. That'll give us more liquid cooling mounting options and uh, more fan mounting options and 
It looks nice. It's easier to clean glass than acrylic. Also, it's 750 Ds versus 7,000 Ds. It's like order a 10x upgrade. Yeah. yeah. The order of magnitude. That's the mathematical term for it. Computer science major. It's great. Fantastic. All right, so let's get to it. Let's build. Okay, so we have the computer built. There's probably going to be a montage sequence in here before we get to this part, but this is as it came together. It looks really nice. Most of the original parts are in here, so we've obviously gotten rid of the enclosure. The case is really clean, though. Stone did a, a phenomenally detailed job. It was basically like he was a car detailer. He really cleaned out the fans. He was like scrubbing the inside and the outside of the fans and everything, so it came together really nicely and then Patrick assembled with the final loop here. So what we've got is we replaced the motherboard because the motherboard was bad. Uh, that seems to be the only component that truly died or was damaged by the hurricane. Pretty good outcome. That's also the one component that I personally would have bet on being the highest risk. It, in further testing after we pulled the board, we did notice that it seems like it works sometimes, but working sometimes is just not good enough for us. So we happen to have the exact same board from our older inventory. We pulled it and put it in here, and so now uh, he'll be good to go with this computer. Video card is the same, it survived, so that's awesome news. It's the hardest part to replace, especially FE cards where they're really specific look, they're lower volume. For the water cooling, we left this in here just to make it a little easier for Bilal to uh, modify or manage the loop. It's not the prettiest solution, but uh, it is something that he sent to us as well, and you know this is easy enough to just drop in a, a new run of tubing uh, in the event he wants to run a cleaner path, but this gives an easy way to do a drain in the loop, which we're going to need anyway when we ship this thing. So this is how it came together. For the loop order, just starting here at the CPU, we've got out down to the pump at in, and then out from the pump up to the radiator, and then that's the loop. There's no GPU involved, very simple loop. So for this loop layout, this most closely mimics what Bilal sent to us, what he built. So we've got it similar to his. It's a little bit cleaned up. The tubes don't look like they have, have that sort of aged effect where they've, some of these clear tubes, you know, over time, they sort of turn yellow. So we did replace them with nice, clean new tubes. Uh, but, you know, that's pretty much the loop. It's very simple, pump res mounted in the front. Uh, it kept most of the same arrangement of where it's all hooking up. Now, personally, if I were doing this loop, I might have hooked it up over on this side instead. But I could see an argument either way. Like, I, I think I may have wanted to do some 90 degree bends here. Uh, but either way, you're crossing the board somewhere. So much nicer looking build overall though. And our biggest goal with this thing was to keep it as close to the original components as possible for the fix. Cause as soon as we're just building a new computer, I, it's just building a computer at that point. It's not nearly as interesting. So this is very close to the original, just with a nice upgrade on the case and uh, the same motherboard, but functional this time. Backside of it looks really good. So this is a feature of the Corsair series cases, the new ones where they are uh, sort of double doored here, kind of like the old 1000D, but the very clean cable management here, we'll have B-roll of this, but clean cable management, good work by Patrick on that, where it's got all the RGB and fan headers and everything all connected, routed, nicely managed under the Velcro. And uh, we even kept the original power supply after a full set of function testing by Patrick Stone determined that it works just fine. So that's it for the computer. It's all functional, works great now. I love that the power supply is still functional. I love that we were able to keep the video card, the CPU, the RAM, and we only changed two parts. And one of them, the case, was just because we thought it'd be nice for Bilal to get a, a big upgrade there. But yeah, it, it came out pretty well considering what it went through. So. Thanks for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net if you'd like to help us out directly. We have the Disappointment PC t-shirts like that one right there on the store. We're in the third and final run of the Disappointment Build 2021 t-shirts. So if you don't buy one soon, they will be gone. We're not going to make them again with the print on the back like that with all the tour dates for the year. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.